Recently, I was working with geometry nodes in Blender and the typical thing I do in my day job is to convert my geometry nodes to meshes so that I can export them to a game engine and for that I need proper UVs. So I've made a little script that does exactly that. Now I was wondering because it worked in older Blender versions, but here I'm using Blender 3.6 and it suddenly gave me this error. The script automates a process we could also do manually. Here's a simple scene which shows what the script does. So in this scene I generate a simple mesh with geometry nodes, then I set a material to it, I unwrap it with the unwrap nodes, and then I store the UVs to an attribute. In the shader editor I can select the materials, and here you can see that I can reference the attribute with the attribute node. Now if I apply the geometry node modifier, the mesh still looks the same. That is because the material is still applied to this mesh. And in the data tab, we can still see the attribute that we've stored. In Blender 3.4, I would choose convert set to UV map. And that would give me proper UVs like you can see in the UV editor. Back to the error, I started to investigate. I stumbled across the release notes of Blender 3.5 and there I discovered that they've changed the way UV data is stored on a mesh. With that, in recent versions of Blender, the option to convert UVs does not exist anymore. And that is actually really cool and I will show you why in a minute. Here I have a fresh new Blender file. Let's add geometry nodes to the default cube. I open the geometry node editor and then I add a new geometry node tree to my object. Let's disable the group input for now. For this tutorial, I work with the simple UV sphere. Now I want to unwrap it. And for this I use the UV unwrap node and also the pack UV island node. In the next step, we want to store this attribute. And for this, we use the store named attribute node. And now it is really important to set the data type correctly. And for this, we use 2D vector, which is new and recent Blender versions. It is also important to set the domain to face corner. Now I can connect my UVs to the store named attribute node and here I choose a name for my UVs. Now for the setup to work properly, we need to split the faces on our UV sphere. And for this we use the split edges node. Now we can reference this attribute in our material. I open the shader editor and we see the default material. Now to apply this material to our geometry nodes, we need to use the set material node and then choose our material. If we switch the viewport to rendered, we can see that the material is applied correctly. Now to reference our attribute, we use the attribute node in the shader editor. And if we type in our attributes name correctly, we can see that the UVs are now transferred to the shader. 
But with Blender 3.5 and up, we don't need to do it this way, because when we save something as a 2D vector to the face corner attribute, it is automatically assumed that it is a new VMAP. So we simply can work with the texture coordinates node instead. This makes things much easier. For example, if I now apply this modifier, we can see in a data tab that the attributes are automatically handled as UV maps. If I now open the UV editor, you can see the generated UV layout. This makes the whole process of generating geometry procedurally and exporting it to other software or game engines really easy. Still, there is one special case we have to keep in mind. If we are using the group input node with geometry that already has UV maps applied, the texture coordinate node will reference these UVs instead of the attributes we are generating in our geometry nodes. In order to override these UV maps, you have to set the attribute's name to the same name as the object's UV maps. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you've liked it. Leave a thumbs up if you like, comment down below, subscribe to my channel and see you next time.